Hello, and uh, welcome to the fifth part in uh, my uh, Tableau tutorial series on uh, visualizing uh, GIS information using Tableau. So, so far we've been talking about some of the map types you can visualize in Tableau using Tableau's own backend data, its own shape files uh, that the software uh, comes installed with. But what if you want to import spatial files of your own? Well, it turns out it's not that complex. Tableau can connect with a variety of different spatial data types, uh, including uh, ESRI shapefiles, geodatabases, GeoJSON, TopoJSON, KML, and a handful of others. Keep in mind that some of these files, such as the ESRI shapefiles, must be indexed with other files, such as attribute and projection files, so that Tableau can know how to display them. Let's get started with something simple. Let's go get some trail maps and state park boundaries for my home state, the state of Tennessee. Let's project them on a map in Tableau. Here I am at gis.tnstateparks.com at the State Open Data Portal. You'll find that a lot of public agencies make their geographical data available on the web for anyone to download. I'm going to go down and see what they've got. They've got Tennessee State Park boundaries. Uh, they've got the center points for those boundaries. Uh, they've got uh, public trails. And they've got campsites. Now, I've already downloaded the files that I need to shape, save time. Uh, sometimes the uh, file sizes can be quite large and take a few minutes to download, uh, but let's go see what makes up one of these file types. So here I have the XML documentation. I have a uh, CPG file, which just tells a few basic things about, uh, say, the character set that's used. Uh, the DBF file, this is my attributes file. Think of it as an Excel spreadsheet that gives me information about every single point and line uh, of, on the shape files. Uh, that I've downloaded, uh, what state park it's a part of, the name of that state park, if there's a uh, uniform number that it's attached to, etc. Here's the projection information. This projection information is not so necessary when you're displaying files in Tableau uh, because uh, Tableau is going to automatically translate everything into its own coordinate, pro project, uh, uh, co own coordinate projection system. Uh, but it's handy to have if you're working with a more advanced GIS software and you need to know how these files were made in the first place. Here's my shapefile data. Here's my index file. The only three mandatory files here are the shx, uh, the .shp, and the .dbf file types. Uh, Tableau needs all three in order to display uh, the vector data properly. And this is vector data. This is points, lines, polygons, and attributes. Let's go to Tableau. For uh, the sake of saving time, I have already uh, uh, connected to the data type that I need. Uh, if I were to uh, just show you how to do it, you do uh, connect to a spatial file, and you just click on the uh, file that you want to open, and Tableau will automatically connect to it. So here I am at my data. You can see that some of it displays in much the same way as the as an Excel file would. There's different uh, numbers, identifying numbers. There's a site number. There's a site name. This is for the campsite data, etc. I'll go to my sheet, and if I want to say display public trails, I'm just going to take the automatically generated geometry file here and drag it onto my sheet. And there it is. I have a trail map for all the different trails in Tennessee. Notice I'm still using the uh, minimum map by that slaughter. I've set it as my default. I like it very much. Now let's say I want to color coordinate it and coordinate it. I'm going to do it by trail type, make it color. Uh, so I have a qualitative color scheme for the kinds of trails in this visualization. And you know, it looks okay. I can add attributes such as trail names. So now when I page over it, I can see, oh, this is the Harpeth River Blue Way, this is the Cumberland Trail, it's for hiking, etc. Now if I want to show the borders of the uh, Tennessee State Natural Areas, I'm going to take the geometry file here, and I'm going to drag it over to add a marks layer. I don't need to use the dual axis feature uh, for this kind of data and you'll see that it's generated polygons. Of course those polygons don't have any data associated yet. Um, so let's see, geometry... Great. 
state natural area name, Savage Gulf state natural area. If I want the uh, polygons to display under the trail map, I would just drag it. And now uh, my uh, trails are displaying over top of the polygons. Now if I want to display campsite, I'm also going to take geometry and I'm going to add a marks layer. And now we have campsites. See, I'll do site number and detail, campground, and there we go. We have a little number associated with each uh, campsite that you can uh, rent in the state of Tennessee. If I wanted to make it pop a little bit more, I might choose a different color, say orange. Orange is a good color in Tennessee. And there we go. It's not the prettiest, but you get the set gist of how to uh, display different uh, geographical data that you downloaded uh, from elsewhere in a map in Tableau. Okay, now let's go do what we just did again with a uh, slightly bigger file. So these this is uh, sh these are shape files that I got from uh, LinkedIn Learning, their course on QGIS, and I think they're useful because they can be displayed in uh, Tableau uh, just like any other shape file. And in this case, I want to uh, bring in some more data. I'm going to add a connection. I'm going to look for a Microsoft Excel file. I know on my desktop, it's called Incidents. So, for Sheets, I can pull Incidents in. I've created a relationship between uh, the shape files and the incidents. So now I'm going to go to my sheet. <coughs> And let's pull the geometry on. And man, look how um, look how Tableau just automatically knows uh, how to project all these shape files. Each of these shape files is for a particular building in the town of Nanaimo in British Columbia. I'm also going to add a layer for the roads, and I might end up filtering uh, these roads by class. So let's say color. And look at all those different colors. Okay, so so far so good. Now let's say I want to uh, get crime statistics. I want to integrate crime statistics with this visualization. So I have a road map and I have a building map of the uh, city of Nanaimo in British Columbia. I would add another layer. Let's go to uh, uh, I've pulled in my uh, coordinates for each crime. Now I'm going to pull in ID here into details and wow we've got a lot of little dots all over the city of Nanaimo showing crimes. I can do add crime type to detail and crime category and you know it really would be nice to filter these crimes out uh, by color. Uh, but right now I have my road center lines calling the color variable. So I'll remove class from color and just have it as a detail. I'll go to incidents and I'll do crime category as color. Ah, that's probably not my best bet. Let's do a crime type by color. There we go. So I have uh, breaking and entering, mischief, shoplifting, theft, theft from motor vehicle, theft of motor vehicle. These are all property crimes. Uh, nothing, nothing violent, nothing lurid. So here I can see all the different crimes, where they were committed, what kind they were. I can look at the attributes here. Uh, I see their coordinates. So this is just another example of how you can use point data to create a symbol map in Tableau using uh, data that you downloaded off the internet. I can also add pages uh, by time. Go to pages here. I'm just going to show year. This is all 2015 data, so right now it's showing null values. Here's the uh, values that are in 2015. Year is not going to be very satisfactory since we only have one year. Uh, worth of data here. So I'm going to go to and filter by month. Um, I can remove my null value. There we have February, March, April, May, 
June, July. There we go. And no, I could filter those out again. It's funny that there aren't many property crimes in uh, British Columbia in February. Probably too cold. Anyway, uh, that's an example of how to uh, uh, use displays, uh, create displays using uh, map files that you uh, downloaded on the internet. One final thing I want to cover is how to use a background image as a map. Now, it's possible that the uh, maps that you want to work with when a display in Tableau are not really the kind of maps that you could uh, express geospatially. Let's say they're a uh, floor plan or a blueprint for a building and you somehow need to plot points uh, on an image. So for here I'm going to connect to my data source, it's sprinkler heads. Let's say I was going needed to show where the sprinkler heads were on a floor plan. So it's a very simple little data source. There's just the names of the heads and then an X and a Y value for each one of them. So I'm going to go to my sheet here. I'm going to go to map. I'm going to go to background images for sheet one. Actually first I'm going to show um, X is rows and Y is columns. So I'm going to go to background images. I'm going to go to sheet one. I'm going to go to add image. Hit browse, choose my background image. I can adjust the uh, uh, washout level. Let's say I want to fade it ever so slightly. I'm going to align the X field with the X, Y field with the Y. Left is zero, right is 10. Uh, bottom is zero, top is 10. You have to define your coordinate system here manually, which is a little bit of pain. But since you're not working with a real coordinate reference system with latitude and longitude values, uh, encoded in. It's just kind of what you got to do. So it says valid. Note that you have to uh, uh, that you have to include the X and Y in your columns and rows first. Otherwise, it'll say invalid. And you say OK. And wow, OK, it's very small. So I'm going to edit axis. Going to do a fixed start. Zero fixed in ten. Going to go fixed start zero ten. Okay, and it looks like I've bungled things ever so slightly. Okay, so uh, now I have a floor plan as my background image in Tableau. Of course, I can make these disappear if I want. Can hit, and I can uh, drag my x, y values, and show sprinkler heads. Now I don't really need color. I'm going to just show it in detail. And look, all my uh, sprinkler heads pop up as points on this background image, projected as points on this background image. It's very simple to do. It would be a little bit tedious if you had to, say, uh, map hundreds and hundreds of different uh, points on a single background image. Tableau is probably not the best tool for doing that, but at a pinch it works. So this, this is how you can integrate maps that are only really uh, uh, images, like a PDF file, or a uh, JPEG file where you can't interact with any of the layers but you still want the information the, to, uh, to display. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this presentation. Uh, I'm sorry if it was a little scattered but I think it's interesting and uh, worthwhile uh, and Tableau is really an amazing tool for connecting to all kinds of different spatial data and uh, allowing you to customize how it displays. Thanks and bye bye.